my name is Abby Hunter and I'm a part of a project to bring light to the creative community that we have here in our very own Lancaster County. And today with me I have Emily Otaviano and tell us a little about the uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself, Emily, and how you became an artist. Okay, well that is there's a lot to that I suppose. <laughs> you could get philosophical about how you're an artist, but um, I did not start out as an artist. I did art um, in high school and it went well and I loved it and all of that. got good feedback, um, but I really wanted to do something to impact the world. And mm -hmm. at the time, I didn't see how art would do that. Um, so I went into education and my husband and I, I guess starting with that, I'm married and have three kids. We homeschool. <coughs> um, we moved to Lancaster uh, two years ago, I think. But um, yeah, I, I wanted to do something um, more impactful. I see the folly of that now. <laughs> um, not that I would trade what I did, but I became a teacher first. Um, so I went to school for teaching and put the art on the shelf. And there was always the niggling voice that I should be doing something with it. But um, pursued my other endeavors and became a teacher. And we were missionaries for several years overseas. Um, and that was wonderful, and um, the art was not part of that, even though that is still very much part of who I am as well. Mm -hmm. um, art kind of came into my life again in 2017. Uh, we experienced somewhat of a tragedy, a family tragedy crisis, and to deal with that and to grieve, I did a little painting the loss that we experienced and it was very healing and it was just very apparent to me that God had put that in me for a reason and that it was meant to be practiced and used and it didn't matter what it looked like or if it became a business or if it um, was just for me but that God put it in me and I was to be using it. Mm -hmm. um, so I started picking up a little bit but we were already in the middle of our ministry in life there so it was here and there, not really much. Yeah. <laughs> and then about a year after that, uh, I had a major health crisis, which brought us back to the States, and I was not able to do anything else. Um, I had been uh, teaching some there and also doing the ministry stuff, but when we came back, I couldn't physically trust my body to do much of anything mm -hmm. um, except heal. I was focusing on healing, and because the art had been a part of the healing, while I'm sitting here, I'm supposed to be resting and not doing this and not doing that. Um, so I picked it back up again and um, have been doing it since and developing my skill. And um, even though it's only been a few years, it's been so enriching to see the skill develop and grow. And I'm much further along than I was when I started. And yeah. um, I think I only started calling myself an artist a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So. And you said that you moved to Lancaster a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I know it hasn't been long since you've been here, but has living in Lancaster had an impact on your life as an artist? Um, I, because it's new, I'm really excited to see how that answer develops yeah. <laughs> over time because I think I'm very hopeful about things here in Lancaster. Um, before, uh, my, my parents were also missionaries, so I grew up partly overseas as well, but before that, um, I lived in a small farming town mm -hmm. in Wyoming. So moving to Lancaster feels a little bit like coming home. Yeah. And that that is good for my creative soul. <laughs> um, I love the cows and the, the, the farmland. That makes me feel at home. It uh, helps me connect in a way that sets my mind at ease. And I see beauty everywhere being in a small town again. So there's that. And also the, um, the arts community. Um, when we first came back to the States, we were in Waxhaw, and I got a little bit connected with the arts community there, and I'm now kind of transferring to the arts community here, and, uh, you know, I didn't know that was a thing before, um, and that's been huge to find the art community. Uh, also, on just a very practical level, uh, because as missionaries we move around and move around the world, and uh, it's a very transient lifestyle, we had not owned a home until now. Yeah. And we bought a home where I have a space for the art. Mm -hmm. So that is different. Yeah. <laughs> and um, very small space. <laughs> but 
but also because we homeschooled. Uh, I have a classroom-ish space, which I have converted once a week to an art classroom as well. So I now teach homeschool art classes uh, from my home, which uh, is new and great and wonderful and unique to our time here in Lancaster. Yeah. And what would you say you get your inspiration from for your work? Um, right off the bat, definitely nature. Nature? Um, I was raised as an outdoorsy girl. <laughs> and... Um, Definitely nature. That's where I go when I need to reset and um, see beauty everywhere in nature. And in little things, not just the grand landscapes, although I love doing those too, yeah. but um, just the intricate feather patterns on a common bird get me excited. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, texture, lighting, all that uh, within nature is definitely an inspiration. Um, also, I would say. Uh, kind of look at the body of my work. I do a lot of commissions, mm -hmm. um, which of course is anything. And people will say, can you do this? And I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I don't want to. Yes. <laughs> but the, um, the whole idea of capturing someone else's idea visually yes. is a, a challenge that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Not everyone does. And you're not always in the mood for it. Yeah. You know, there are times you have to be like, I have to set aside this other person's idea and do something peaceful. <laughs> but I do really enjoy the challenge of, I have this story, and I've got this element, and this element, and this element, and this element, and can you put that all in one image? And you're like, yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, I am inspired by the challenge of that, and can I capture someone's idea in one image? Yeah. Their story, and, and I think that maybe um, that question of can I capture this is the same inspiration I see in nature, too. Yeah. If you see something, could I really create that texture with yeah. just a graphite pencil? Yeah. Could I? Could I? I'm going to try. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, or the lighting. Uh, could I do that? What would I do that with? How yeah. would I do that? How could I make that look like that without making it look, you know, whatever? That That is what motivates me to drop everything and go pick up my pencils or paint or whatever. Yeah, and pencils and paint. like. Going off of that, what is your favorite medium to work with? That is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I've read or been told you should, uh, if you're going to be a professional, you should choose one thing, get really good at it. Yeah. And I don't think I can. <laughs> because, um, because of the way that, that inspiration works, if I have a concept that I'm determined to get on paper, I'm going to choose what worked best for that concept. Yeah. Um, that, that's not to say I don't have ones that I'm best at or that I prefer. Mm -hmm. So within that, anything in pencil form I think I'm best at, mm -hmm. probably because I've practiced that more. And, you know, like I said, I've only been doing this a few years now where I'm really developing it. So um, I want to get back to oils later in <laughs> a different season <laughs> when I won't have to wash my carpet with turpentine oh, and yes. there aren't kids <laughs> and interruptions. And, Wait, but I have to finish that painting because my drawing period is right now. Yeah. Um, but I'm not doing as much of that. I am doing graphite, charcoal, pastel, colored pencil, watercolor. I have a love-hate relationship with watercolor. Yeah. <laughs> but I always keep coming back to it. So that is definitely in the list. Like, do you uh, find that your pieces are multimedia or do you find you use one medium per piece? Depends on the piece. Depends on the piece. <laughs> <laughs> so I often end up bringing in a little of this and a little of that if I need to achieve something that I can't do with a set of whatever I have in front of me. Yes. Uh -huh. um, oh, and pen and ink is another one. Mm. I love to stick. <laughs> Just that it's therapeutic. <laughs> you might be the only one. <laughs> I, I might be, and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll still make my students do it. Yes. Um, <laughs> when we get to that part. But I do love that, and just, uh, again, taking it from something challenging and just testing if I can do it, and then doing some of that with the stipple, with colored ink, and yeah. I'm like, well, what if one was in this with paint, and the stipple is with black ink, what if you do something with the pedal? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have experimented with that, and, um, yeah, I can't nail one down. Like, if you told yeah. me you're best at charcoal pencils, or charcoals and, and pencils, you should stick to that. I think I wouldn't give up, but I would cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know what you mean. Yeah, I, I, I can't commit 100%, but my skill level, I think, is definitely best in anything in pencil form. Yeah, and to wrap it all up <laughs> with a nice bow, <laughs> what would you say being creative means to you? 
I love that question. <laughs> I love that because um, I was raised in a household where not creativity was not huge. Yeah. It wasn't that it was absent, um, but it was not huge. And I would hear people say, oh, I'm not creative. I can't even draw a straight line. I'm like, those two things don't necessarily go together, yeah. for one. But also, just because you can't draw a picture does not mean you're not creative. Mm -hmm. And then I have, over time, wrestled with this whole concept. Um, I am a person of faith, so mm -hmm. believing that we are created in the image of God. Each individual person is, and he is the master creator. And his creativity is a huge part of who he is as an entity, but we are in his image, so we must all be creative somehow. So how does that look when we put a very narrow definition on creativity? Yeah. And the philosophy I have come up with, <laughs> not that it will you know, be forever the same, but is that creativity happens at a very human level when you stand in awe of the world around you, you take a moment, you appreciate it, you look at it, you study it, you notice it, and you stand in awe of it, it makes a mark on you, and you turn around and express that for others. Yeah. So I, you know, that can come in many forms. Um, my husband does woodworking. <laughs> you know, so he loves the you know the look and the smell and the wood. He appreciates the wood and makes it come out for other people's benefit. Yeah. Um, one of the people in my life who always said, "I'm not creative. I can't even draw a straight line." Yeah. Is my father, and he'll still tell you that. He'll introduce me. That's my daughter. She's an artist. I don't know where she got it. I can't draw a straight line. <laughs> but he is creative because he's the one who taught me to observe the world. He's a science teacher. And if you watch him teach students, you can see that he has observed and noticed and studied and been marked, stood in awe of what God has created, and he turns it around in a funny way, usually, yeah. to teach it to students. And he has, that is his form of being creative. Yeah. So I think every human soul is creative. It just, some of us do it visually. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you for